Welcome back to another Torah Tuesday. I'm in my office ready to talk to you about Genesis chapter 1. I found a nugget in Genesis chapter 1 as I was writing my new book for InterVarsity Press that I wanted to share with you. So it's tucked away in a verse that you've probably heard many times. On day 5, God is creating the sea creatures and the birds of the sky. And it says, uh, in verse 20, and God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea. I was reading along in Hebrew and I came to this great creatures of the sea. And to my surprise, the phrase is hatanimim hagdolim, which is literally the mighty sea serpents or mighty sea monsters. And this surprised me because I didn't remember reading about sea monsters before in Genesis chapter 1. But indeed, God creates the great sea monsters of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds. And every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. So the next time we see the tanin, or sea serpent, is in Exodus chapter 7, when Moses and Aaron confront Pharaoh and Aaron throws down his staff and it becomes a tanin. That's not the regular word used for snake. It's not the snake from Genesis chapter 3 that we see in the garden. This is the sea serpent. So what would be the significance of that? I think what's going on in Genesis 1 is that God is demonstrating his sovereignty over all created things. Even the things that seem way too big for human comprehension or control, the sea monsters that are famed to live in the deep. Those are things that are not too big for God. In fact, he creates it and it says, God saw that it was good. So God creates even wild animals, am animals outside the control of humans, and he calls it good. But then when we get to Exodus chapter seven, we see creation gone wrong. Pharaoh has oppressed the Israelites and other people. He's, he's forcing labor on them, as we've talked about in previous Tuesdays. And, and the, what, the showdown that happens in the palace is the showdown between the sea serpent or a serpent of Moses and Aaron and the serpent of Pharaoh. And if you remember the story, Aaron's serpent swallows Pharaoh's serpent. So Pharaoh is able to replicate this amazing sign that Aaron does in his presence, but his serpent, the resulting serpent, is bested by Moses and Aaron. So I think what we see there is that the creator God is demonstrating his superiority over the human whose rule represents a perversion of the human mandate to care for creation. Pharaoh is not doing what humans are supposed to do to care for, the, for creation. And so God demonstrates again and again that creation is out of Pharaoh's control and then it's in God's control. We see that with all the plagues, but we see it already in the sign with Aaron's staff turning into a snake. So if you want to read more about the sea serpent, there's a few more places in the Old Testament where it appears. In Job 41, it's called Leviathan, and God talks about creating Leviathan to play around in the sea. Again, similar picture to Genesis chapter 1. This snake, the sea serpent, does not scare God. It's God's plaything. In Isaiah 27, verse 1, it's called Leviathan. The Tanin is called Leviathan, so that's where the connection is made. And then very interestingly, the prophet Ezekiel refers to Pharaoh as a Tanin. He uses the metaphor of a sea serpent to describe Pharaoh in Ezekiel 29, verse 3, and 32, verse 2. So you can check out those passages and let me know what you think of that. Uh, such an interesting connection. So I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little glimpse at a connection between Genesis and Exodus again. Thanks for watching this far. Um, make sure that you share the video if you liked it and like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. And thanks for watching Tour Tuesday.